What you got to be concerned about is turnovers, because other than turning the ball over, it's going to be difficult for Boston to come from this far back. Celtics are shooting. Nets are closing in on 60%. Van Horn drills that one. Keith Van Horn now with six points. And this is the latest, largest lead of the game. Okay, this started out as a great day in Boston. Red Sox win the first two games. The Yankees started the bad news today. The New Jersey Nets are continuing the trend. When he struggles, it's very evident. McCullough missing the first free throw and uh, knocking down the second. Big double-digit leads. Pierce, double team, and able to put it in. That's what he sees every time he puts the ball on the floor. Okay, it's a hard game to do anything. Aaron Williams with his third foul. Every game with you is up. No, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Gets it. Armor Moore. Eastern, the WNBA on NBC returns. The Sparks, who won today, take on the Houston Comets. And following the WNBA, game four this series between the Celtics and the Nets. And then run a little play for Kerry Kittles under. Kid loses it. Nice save that time by Tony Petit. Final seconds of the third quarter. Tony Delft, excellent feed. And Rodgers able to put it in. That's right now. Jefferson, the latest to guard Pierce. Nice quick move. Of course, Pierce is a big-time fourth-quarter player, but if the Celtics put themselves in too big a hole to make it matter. Tony Batie was limping as he ran up the floor, and they forced a turnover. Not too big a hole if the Nets turn the ball over. Walker against Van Horn goes right at him, left-handed. And just like that, it's cut to 17. This is the closest they've been in the second half. Stars, you saw them talking at the timeout between the quarters. Paul Pierce responds right away. Antoine Walker says, I'm just not talking. I'll show you what I mean. He also goes right to the basket. Tony Petit, short. No way, but it's more important for the Celtics in this series to step up and respond right now. Pierce draws the foul and won. Somehow held on. And he's got a chance for a three-point play. The Celtics have cut it to 15. Paul Pierce again puts the ball on the floor. That's a careless foul right there. If you're not going to foul him hard, let him shoot a layup. Don't give him three points. And a 14-point. gets past Jefferson again and puts it in. No, no New Jersey net help defense. That's four plays. Paul Pierce puts the ball on the floor, but it's less what they're doing on the floor. It's what went on between the corners. The in the first two games of the series, big leads were built. Comebacks came, but they fell short. This was the biggest lead built as the team misses. Anderson with the steal, and he draws the foul. But every free throw enormous right now when you're down by double figures or more. They'll need more than the 80% free throw. It's more a game than he was in the regular season because he's producing in the playoffs. At both ends, Pierce inside. Paul Pierce already in this fourth quarter has nine points. He led the NBA in fourth quarter points. Both of the calls. Talking about Paul Pierce's fourth quarters, Mike, no team has he torched more in the fourth quarter this season than the New Jersey Nets. And that one game where he had 46 of his 48 in the second half against them. Tony Delk hits the three. Different player this quarter. The confidence, great spin move right to the rim. The help is too slow coming. Tony Delk is instant offense. You can't give him that good a look have struggled from the line all game but they've hit four in a row here four big ones and they're back up by 12. Pierce inside puts it in for the Nets but how about Paul Pierce splits the defense even though Jason Kidd is there great body control watch him turn his shoulder to avoid Jason Kidd and gets to the rim he avoids the offensive foul and for two Anderson was 0 for 7 from the field at one point. He was in his last four shots. Knocks down that free throw. Their home floor were booed by their 
fans getting whacked by as many as 26 points in the second half suddenly come alive here in the fourth quarter. That after a pretty verbal bashing by Antoine Walker in the huddle prior to the start of the fourth. He let his teammates know he was not happy. And they've got it to single digits. Rodgers goes for the fake. Blocking foul and one. Walker will pick up his fourth. And lead back to 12. Just over five and a half to play. Here in his fourth. A huge turnaround, but still an uphill climb for the Celtics. Kenny Anderson inside. And Anderson has hit his last five shots from the field. I think the net on defense. He didn't foul out at all this year. All the minutes that he plays as Rodgers hits that one. In fact, he hands and the officials respect his defensive presence. He gets a little bit of slack, but it's deserved. He's an all-defensive player. After being dominated for the first three quarters of this game, the Boston Celtics exploding here in the fourth and perhaps on the verge of the greatest fourth quarter comeback in NBA playoff history. They were down by 21 to start this fourth quarter. Phoenix defeating Houston down 18 to start the fourth back in 94. And that one took overtime. Walker, big free throw. Five-point game. Mike, they're defending. Their defense has been better each successive quarter. And the New Jersey Nets are helping him with turnovers. There Antoine Walker is and how much he respects his basketball IQ. That might have been a little emotional, but he got his point across. Hustle back for the rebound. Both teams in the penalty. Both teams with two timeouts plus a 20. Pierce inside, puts it in. Jason Pierce has the advantage. Shooting better from the line. And he kind of coaxed that one in. Got to take care of the ball, Mike. They're killing themselves on the offensive end with turnovers. One point game. Time in the playoffs and leading by 19 points plus entering the fourth quarter. You see a perfect number there. And Pierce. Hits the big free throw to tie the game. Mike, if I'm the New Jersey Nets, if there's one shot I did not want in that possession, it's a Kerry Kittles three-point shot. Celtics lead. One of the most amazing comebacks in NBA history. 22nd timeout called by New Jersey. This crowd is absolutely delirious. It's not the old Boston Garden, but it certainly feels like it today. Kittles drives hard and throws it away. Here comes Anderson. Blocked by Kittles for the goaltend. Celtics go up by three. 29.8 remaining. This entire building on its feet. The Celtic great leading the cheers. No one has been quiet since. Now for New Jersey, this game is far from over. They're shell-shocked right now, but they have to keep their heads in it. They certainly have a chance to still win. It's a one-possession game. Doesn't have to be a three necessarily right now. Kittles. Van Horn blocked by Walker. Rebounded by Pierce. And they found with 17.6 remaining. Antoine Walker with a huge block. Nets were just thinking three and they didn't really have to as Pierce shaken up on the play. Keith Van Horn. Antoine Walker reaches in. I don't know what he got a piece of right there. That's also a very dangerous play. He fouls him there and that's close. It's three free throws. Meanwhile, Boston will call timeout. Aaron Williams, who committed the foul on Pierce. New possession game. The Celtics can do anything but foul. Kid for three. Blocked by Rodgers. Knocked loose. Harris has it. Kid for three. And the Boston Celtics with the greatest fourth quarter comeback in NBA playoff history.
What an emotional scene as the Celtics take a, take a 2-1 lead in this best of seven Eastern Conference Final. What seemed to be an insurmountable New Jersey lead turns into a devastating Nets loss. Well, devastating is not the word. The Boston Celtics just kept coming back. 41-16 in the fourth. Let's go to Lewis Johnson.